How's it going, Malonites? Uh, welcome to the weekend. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, just so recapping the week. So obviously on Friday, we finished down by about 10% on the day. Not great. Interestingly, if you look at the week in total though, Mullen actually ends up about 4.5% up for the week. So we technically had a green week. So uh, there's still a bit of an after effect of the short squeeze rally. And when you consider the week before, um, was also a, a positive week. Mullen's actually strung together two positive weeks. Uh, you know, given how crazy things have been, it's, it's you know, sometimes interesting to look back and realize that, well, we've actually trekked up the last two weeks, but um, still the volatility is not very comforting or reassuring unless you're like someone who trades for that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, we've actually had two positive weeks despite all that's gone on. And plus, you know, I've been, you know, somewhat critical of Marlon Automotive, um, you know, recently. I, I have been for a little while, but, uh, yeah. So surprised me when I looked at that, there's been two green weeks in a row. Now, obviously this week we've, there was definitely a bit of a short squeeze rally. There was a little bit the week before, but there was definitely a big short squeeze rally this week. Um, we saw the stock go up by, you know, it doubled over a two day period. Um, and then we've had like a big sell off since then. So, yeah, um, and that's been based on the news that Marlon Automotive has been accepted for the HVIP, uh, HIVP um, voucher program in California, and they have now got a dealership partnership with um, Pritchards, which will, you know, hopefully lead to more sales because really that's what Marlon needs to be doing. They need to be booking sales and banking the money because as we've spoken about on here extensively, they really have a uh, cash flow problem. They are asset rich. They have a lot of, um, you know, property and uh, equipment, which is worth a lot of money, uh, but they are short for cash. They need cash for materials to fund the, um, you know, the production of the vehicles that they're doing. So they need money. So hopefully Pritchard is going to be uh, something that delivers some sales soon and meaningful sales for Marlin Automotive. Um, yeah, now just commenting on, uh, some comments I've had recently, uh, someone was asking me about like Mullen's all time high being, uh, in the millions of dollars when you factor in the, um, reverse stock splits. When you go on Google, I think I'm guessing this is where I've got it from because I saw it too. And you, and you max out, um, Marlon Automotive stock history, it goes back to 2015. Uh, and I think it was a SPAC at that point in time. I, I to, I'm pretty sure it went public via SPAC. So while the stock Mullen did trade online and was um, after affecting the reverse stock splits in the millions of dollars, uh, really the actual all-time high is about $330,000 per share. Um, however, you remember, you've got to divide that by 17500 because that's how many shares uh, one current Mullen automotive share is worth historically. So 330,000 divided by 1750, still not looking not looking great. Um, what you're looking at about two, maybe $60 per share um, based on current share prices, uh, based on based on the split. But, but you can see like how far down the stock has fallen because we're now seeing around the $4.50 mark from a high of about 660 or something like that. I might have my math wrong, I'm doing it on top of my head here. Um, so yeah, that, that was the all time high. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is people talk about what's gonna be the next big thing for Marlon. So Marlon and you know, would and would a big thing come for Marlon that would actually save the company? Now, I've kind of speculated about this before that I think Marlon might be positioning themselves to secure some financing through either the sale and lease back of one of their assets or just a clean sale of one of their assets. And I think it might be one of the engineering facilities because they did recently announce they're gonna combine the operations of the two, shoring up one of the facilities. And you know, that's they're worth in the millions of dollars. So that would give them some cash flow if, if necessary. Uh, if you've if you followed a company that it's got, they've gone now, but they were called Lordstown Motors. Uh, they had a similar deal that gave them about a 18 month lifeline when they um, partnered with Foxconn. Foxconn bought their manufacturing facility and leased it back to them and also had some deal to help them equip the facility and and that and that, that they would have permission to use the facility, so they went under. Foxconn kept the they they own the um, facility, so Foxconn still profiting from it. So it could be a similar sort of deal for Marlon Automotive. I'm not saying that they will meet the same, uh, you know, uh, destiny as uh, Lordstown Motors did, but you know, at the same time, 
things don't look that great for Marlon Automotive. Um, unless you come from a shorting position, then they look great. Anyway, um, so I think that's going to be what their next move is. If the company was to do something big, I think, look, really right now, they've cut back all their operations. Um, the only big things that could save them is like if someone was to come in and say that they're going to buy out the stock. But I don't think that's going to be, that won't be enough to recoup the value of, um, you know, what's been lost by investors. Uh, if there's to be like a, a takeover, you know, like you can pick up Mulder and for under $30 million uh, at the moment. Um, because I think that's the end. That's might be the only way out um, because they are getting close to insolvency. Uh, maybe someone's going to get them in a bit of a fire sale. Uh, if you've got any other, or oh, there could be, you know, the other thing too, there could be some meaningful um, sale come through. They've been, Mullen's been putting a lot of their ducks in a row to try and uh, get things done with uh, the government, you know, sales through to the government and, you know, even the, um, you know, to be a supplier for the defense, the US Defense Force. So, you know, maybe something on their develops, but, you know, they've gone a bit quiet on these things, so I wouldn't be holding my breath, but, you know, who knows? They'll, they'll put out PR on anything that happens. If David does a fart that smells not so bad, they'll, you know, they'll do a press release on it. So that's how they, they operate. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, if you've got any other thoughts on what might save Muller Automotive, share them in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, and the market's trading your favour. Cheers.